Uh, next scheduled speaker, Reed Graves, Six Degrees Counterfeit Prevention. Thank you very much. My name is Reed Graves, and I'm here today to represent um, Six Degrees Counterfeit Prevention. And I want to um, portray a vision. I want you to, to come away today with knowing what's possible. And specifically, I'd like to address the um, ensuring authenticity of certificates of analysis. So uh, that relates to question uh, number eight and how... Um, how can we ensure that importers can demonstrate their COA authenticity? So that's what I would like to talk about. And again, I um, uh, would like to educate you on what's possible. So I'll be talking about the uh, protecting the patient. Ultimately, that's what we're here for today, is uh, protecting our patients in the, in the drug industry. Uh, and what Six Degrees Counterfeit Prevention can offer. I'd like to talk about the COA content. Uh, encryption, de-encryption, and then authentication process that we can offer. I'll show you a, a brief demo of uh, our technology, and then also talk about challenges and uh, benefits of this type of approach. But again, I want you to envision what's possible. Protecting our patients is of primary importance. We have uh, the World Health Organization identifying that up to 30% of our drugs are counterfeited in developing nations. This is particularly troublesome in South America where we have counterfeit malaria medications. Um, so I, I know I'm preaching to the choir in, in the importance of um, ensuring that we secure our supply chains to prevent this. 10% of our drugs in the United States are counterfeit. 25% of the medications in developing countries are uh, considered counterfeit. And the biggest danger is online uh, acquisition of medications, where it's up to 50%. So this is uh, a big problem. It's a growing problem as well. Um, so I think it's time to act very quickly. So the problem can go all the way back to the API. And as you know, uh, when you take a finished goods, the API is several nodes upstream of the supply chain. And certificates of analysis, I think, can play an extremely important role in ensuring the security of the supply chain all the way back to those APIs, and including excipients as well. Well, what can Six Degrees uh, offer? Six Degrees is a leading provider of a, an encryption technology that is the only non-mathematical encryption technology in the world. And it was developed in Israel. Uh, it's approved for export by the Israeli Department of Defense, and um, um, it is a tremendously secure way of encrypting data, de-encrypting it, and representing it um, back to the user. Let's talk about the, the COA content, and what I'd like to show you is a COA is, um, I break down into three main components. The header, which is uh, typically a company logo, company name, the address, the item number, item description, the batch. Uh, and it can include the date of manufacture, the expiration date, destination market, and even the COA itself can have versioning. So you can have a, a revision of the specifications and that can be reflected in your COA. Then you have the body of the um, COA where you have master data such as the test, the specifications, the test method. And then you have the variable data, such as the results. And then comparing the results to the specification, is that a, does it conform or pass fail? And then finally, at the bottom, you have your review and approval. So information can be compiled by one person, reviewed by another person, and then also uh, approved by uh, a third person. COA can be one page, depending on the test specifications, or it can be multiple pages. So here's what we're uh, proposing. Every batch has uh, unique uh, attributes. And so in your laboratory information management system, we call it LIMS for short, 
Um, that's where your test results are captured. Your certificates of analysis are um, presented as an output of that LIMS process. So you have uh, the shell of the document, what we call the template, and then the results itself. What we're proposing is a, an application server with six degrees counterfeit prevention application there, where we capture that data, encrypt it, uh, and lock it down, basically lock it down. At that point, um, it would result in a 2D barcode, um, and that would be passed along. When you uh, scan that 2D barcode, it's going to represent the entire content of the certificate of analysis. So think of it this way, as, as soon as the laboratory result, the COA is outputted, you encrypt it, you lock it down, you pass it on either as a 2D barcode or it can be encrypted in other data carriers like, such as RFID tags, um, that kind of thing. So when the receiving site receives that um, uh, certificate of analysis, they'll scan that 2D barcode and the results will come up. Additionally, I'd like to plant um, another seed in your head, and that is we can layer different levels of security. So when, um, say, a customs agent, we can customize what level of information is available to that customs agent when he scans that barcode. We also would uh, recommend um, these barcodes, by the way, can be read with any uh, non-proprietary equipment. What would be proprietary for us is to recommend a certified readers would be downloaded with our software. And the reason we want to do that is to ensure that when that 2D barcode, let's say, is, is read, that scanning event, it'll go through a secure network to verify and authenticate that certificate analysis back to the server. This is a brief demo. Um, we have um, at our website uh, several demos of our technology, and basically this is like a template. And you have, um, say, standard or master data on the left. You have a header. Um, you would fill out this information. It, now I'm talking about this demo. Um, fill out this information. Click on the guarantee um, stamp. That encrypts the data and represents that entire content as a um, encrypted URL string, which is represented in step number three there. And if you were to, to cut and paste that in a browser and hit OK, um, it would represent the entire contents of that document, the, uh, the, the, the form and also the variable content. When you have a scanning event, it's going to go back to that server and log and geolocate that scanning event. It's going to capture the IP address, the near cell phone tower, and the GPS coordinates. Now think of the implications of that. You can track and trace this. Every scanning event that you have when that product or that document goes, you're going to be able to capture those, uh, that information. So think about uh, the possibilities that this has with regards to enabling, say, end-to-end -end supply chain management and tracking and tracing. So what are some of the challenges? Um, there are two main areas that I would like to focus on today, and that is uh, we're even seeing that hackers are exploiting um, areas of vulnerability that we never even perceived before, and that is uh, this latest one, Android uh, security has been hacked, um, and unbeknownst to uh, the users, a uh, malicious Trojan can enter into the software, um, and it is undetected. So even this represents a danger to e-signatures. So uh, at CryptoCodex and 6DCP, we do not sign a document, but capture the entire content and safeguard it. And that's what we want to do. Another um, aspect that's a challenge is um, cybersecurity. When we, um, you know, uh, under consideration right now, federal regulations for tracking and tracing, serialization of our products, California law is going into effect in January 2015. That's going to generate quite a large set of data for every serial number on every finished good that's going to be sold in California, and really for the, in the entire United States. 
that is going to be extremely valuable uh, information that we must safeguard. Our technology, we feel, is the best on the market to be able to do that. We've had instances where RSA has been hacked. And, and lastly here, um, digital signatures are not really signatures. Um, this is kind of a cute uh, comment here. My computer makes that calculation. I am not signing anything. My computer is. <laughs> So what are some of the other challenges? Um, not all certificates are digitally signed. I mean, that's a prevalent pra practice, but not all are digitally signed. So some are manually signed and scanned and faxed. Now we know that uh, counterfeiters will be able to bleach out some of the uh, information on a C of A and uh, spoof it, or um, not really spoof it, but uh, to adulterate that document. And what we're proposing is to be able to lock that down so that that can't happen. So we have the capability to provision readers from authorized personnel responsible for signing these documents with an approval or a denial function. So when they scan the code, they not only verify that the content is original, uh, they can approve and deny as well. The scanning event is logged into the system that the uh, authorized user approved the certificate. It will record the time and the date and the, uh, the reader and the scanner ID. Another challenge to think about is if this were implemented, we have uh, the architecture of this technology to consider. Would you want uh, one central system or a distributed system at the manufacturer or the laboratory environment? Um, our feeling is that one central repository causes risk. You put all of your eggs in one basket, which may not be a good approach. Um, if, if we can encrypt the data and preserve it, then that mitigates the risk for um, being attacked by cyber um, security experts. And then enforcement of one process. This was mentioned earlier. I think it's very important. Um, if we're going to in enforce this, it really should be one process and one technology and one standard. That's going to be, uh, I think, a challenge to do that. But I, I agree with the previous speaker who mentioned that as well. And finally, the benefits. Um, we want to provide security for the certificates of analysis. We want to um, provide that cybersecurity expertise. We want the, the authentication by the user of that certificate of analysis. This is military-grade encryption. I say that because the, the genesis of this technology was to protect the medical records of Israeli soldiers. So think of it that way. Uh, this is interoperable with other systems. No special equipment would be required. Um, we would require, again, that a downloadable app to uh, um, a smartphone or uh, a reader in order to implement this type of a system. Uh, we can track and trace where these barcodes are read and uh, throughout the supply chain. We this can be integrated with LIMS, an ERP system, serialization or other transactional systems. This could be the foundation for tracking and tracing of APIs, excipients, drug products, finished goods. We also are enabled to, um, to provide data compression so that your retrieval is very quick and efficient. It's a very cost-effective solution as well. We can be GS1 compliant. That would depend on the client providing GS1 master data to um, for our encryption technology. And we would like to customize and fully secure and create a cloud-based system uh, to, to sponsor this type of um, technology. You guys are, I hope you have questions. I want to thank uh, publicly Susan DeMars for helping me to, to be here today. Thank you, Susan. So that, those are my questions. I do have some back, backup slides. Uh, we generate some additional barcodes. Um, and I, I think we're out of time for the presentation. I think there might okay. be one question. Yeah, I have a question to Brian Pendleton, Office of Policy. So what are you recommending with, with respect to requirements regarding COAs in the Section 713, Standards for Admission, or GIPs? What, what specific area are you recommending with respect to the use of them? Yeah, my um, response to that would be that question eight was asking, how do you ensure the authenticity of a COA? So what we're suggesting is that this technology can lock down the certificate and the results you can use that for track and trace, and that will allow you to authenticate that, uh, that test result. 
Does that, Thank you. Does that help? Sure. Thanks. Doug Stern, Cedar. Um, does six degrees have cost estimates associated with the benefits and costs of using this technology? Um, I'll have to defer to uh, my boss to answer that question, but um, we can provide comments on that in, uh, in the uh, in the written comments if you'd like. It would depend on the volumes, but uh, I think certificates of analysis are there's going to be a, quite a volume of that, so it would be very cost effective. Dominic Nisiano from ORA. The process that you, that you utilize, would it be a certificate that would be given to an importer of record to, to provide to the agencies at the time of entry? Yes, that's a very good point. Um, so this could be um, a 2D barcode that could be attached to, let's say, an advanced notice document. It could be on the, the document itself, and a customs agent could scan that and look at the uh, certificates of analysis. Um, so yes, we, we can uh, sponsor that 2D barcode or whatever the data carrier be if it are if it's an RFID tag that can uh, accompany those goods. Yes, and that's the, I think the power of the track and trace as well when you combine the two. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.